Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and today we are joined by Kyle, who, of course, has been running around doing plenty of electric things. And recently, he got to speak with John Wong, a engineer at Honda Acura, who's been an engineer there for 28 years. That's a pretty impressive record, I got to say. And you two talked all about the new ZDX electric SUV. This is their collaboration with GM to build the first volume EV for Acura. There's a lot of questions that you had for this collaboration. So let's get into it. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, They will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Okay, Kyle, so you got to, and we're going to play this for the audience very soon, speak with John all about this collaboration. What were your first, okay, I got to know how this went down, thoughts? Yeah, so the whole, uh, you know, sort of interview that you're about to hear about is essentially... I wanted to know, of course, a little bit about the ZDX, but then also who decided what through this program. Because it's not just ZDX, it's also Honda Prologue, these two electric uh, Ultium-based SUVs uh, sold through Honda. It's not uncommon to find brands sharing technologies. We've seen it with the BMW Z4 and Toyota Supra. Uh, and, and the list goes on and on. We can come up with a million examples of sometimes badge engineering is how we call it. Uh, and and the way that this whole project worked out with the new Acura ZDX, by the way, if you want a full tour, uh, the video is already live on out-of-spec reviews. Um, it, I wanted to know, like, what did Acura and Honda do and what did GM do? And hopefully throughout this thing, you'll learn about how that process worked. And from a vehicle development standpoint, how unusual and interesting this was uh, as a project. I'm not sure if it's for the better or for the worse, but it is what it is. And uh, John will explain the entire collaboration between Honda Acura and GM, uh, as well as some bits about the ZDX and and why they chose to have certain specifications for it. Um, This was an eye-opening conversation. Um, just, just right off the face of it, I thought Honda and Acura had more skin in the game. I thought they had more, uh, you know, engineering targets, durability targets than they actually did. And it was really interesting to see what John had to say. John's a viewer of the show. So shout out to him for joining and being transparent about the collaboration. And, uh, let's get into that now. Guys, you join me with John Wong, who is responsible for this vehicle and many others under the Honda Acura brand. How long have you been an engineer at Honda Acura? It's uh, 28 years. 28 years. And shout out to our friend Sky, of course. Oh, yeah. Sky <laughs> Malcolm. Hi. Yeah, we, <laughs> I we, love love, you. we love Sky. Yeah. So I started the same day as Sky, actually. Really? That's how I know him. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> well, Sky is our EV nerd. He always comments on this channel's podcast. So, <laughs> hey, Sky. Uh, but John, we're here taking a look at the new ZDX. Yes. This is an electric SUV um, that we have a full video review on, I should mention, on our reviews channel that went up right now. But we have you here. Yep. You're the super nerd when it comes to this car. So I thought maybe we can talk about the product as a whole, how you guys worked with GM to engineer it, um, what was Acura stuff, what was their stuff, how that all came together. Yep. But ultimately, can you give us a high-level overview of what the car is? Right. So it's basically kind of the embodiment of Acura's precision-crafted performance, but as an EV, our first volume EV for Acura. So you can see the design is very familiar, but kind of adjusted to the EV era. So it's got a very long wheelbase, low roof, and uh, low and wide. Is it Uh, a longer wheelbase than the MDX? Yes, it is a longer wheelbase. And it's almost the same size as MDX, but it just happens to be a lot lower. Um, And then the wheelbase is significantly longer. Uh, So you can see we still have the uh, diamond pentagon grill, but it's closed off because we don't need that airflow there. So instead, we highlight it with an illumination. Right. So the illumination is a different LED style than on the headlights. Yeah, you yeah. can like see the individual. Right. Yeah. Things. And it's, but it's linked to the DRL. So it's always on together. Okay. Yep. What's behind the badge? There's um, actually nothing because okay. the, radar the radar is, is there. Down here. Yeah. So we just have the camera there for hands-free okay. cruise. Yep. Yep. 
And so you also have a 360 cam. Yeah, that's that right. Is that standard on the car? It's only on the Type S. Ah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And then we have 22-inch um, wheels and tires. This is the summer tire option. So it comes with black finish on the wheels. And then it also has the um, Brembo 6 piston fixed caliper. So you're using premium contact 6 yep. Continentals for the summer. The all seasons of Michelin Primacy Primacy. AS3. Correct. Um, what was the decision to go with those two suppliers? How did that um, come down? You know, they're, the, they're kind of at the premium level. And, um, and that's kind of the, the bandwidth or the, the benefits of working with General Motors on the Altium platform that these many tire sizes and brands are already ready. Ah, okay, so this was a tire that was developed with Ultium yeah. in mind, yeah. not something that Acura had to go through right, that process. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. I mean, maybe we can switch to the collaboration now. So really, yeah. this is a, a collaboration with General Motors, and uh, this is using the Ultium uh, platform. So the, the skateboard, let's say, the chassis, the skateboard, and the powertrain are all General Motors know-how, and kind of they were in charge of that development. And also, this is made at uh, General Motors factory, so the, the integration and the verification or the validation is all General Motors' responsibility. So tell me about the early days of that partnership, because we spoke when we did the prologue yeah. launch, and it was, you know, Honda, Acura, have your very specific language just yeah. around how to communicate certain parameters yeah. of vehicles and attributes that you want the car to have. Yeah. And they may want the same thing, but say it completely differently. Yeah. So how did this integration go between the two teams? So we basically had like the core team from Honda embedded within GM. So we, there was a bunch of us that moved to Michigan and then we started wow. working at the General Motors Tech Center every day. So we got GM badges and we just <laughs> went in there and worked. And you know, Teams or Skype is great, but actually face-to-face -face is better. So we were there embedded and we worked with them every day on how to learn the GM process and system. Because really, when a car is made at a certain plant, you need to follow that process. So that supply base, that specification, those requirements. So Honda had to learn all that and then make it um, with them. So it was kind of a challenge. It was fun. I mean, you're learning, as I said, it's English, but it's a new English, for us, <laughs> yeah, you know, so um, an all new set of acronyms that, you know, it might be the same. We might, Honda, they're actually, this is funny. There's some acronyms that are the same between Honda and GM, but they mean completely something different. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, so you get yeah, confused. Yeah. You're like, oh, that, that's... Uh, what? What does that mean? And then you learn it and you're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so now you got to have like a yeah. translation. Yeah, manual. exactly. Yeah, actually I had an Excel that I would list out oh. what, what it meant. Amazing. So, so those are the kind of interesting experiences you have. And we've been there for four years working together. Yeah. So um, ZDX is similar in construction to Lyric, which would be like size wise. Yeah, I mean, based the on car. the, yeah, based on the, um, the factory location, this is made in Spring Hill, Tennessee. So um, as GM would call it, the donor model would be the lyrics so that there's efficiencies okay. in part sharing or uh, manufacturing efficiencies, right? So then how did you make it in Acura? Like, I mean, obviously, the styling. design, yeah, the absolutely. styling, yeah. and then the feature set, kind of what's available and how the trims are differentiated. And then, as, in, as we talked about uh, previously, um, to kind of level set both companies, we took up some Acuras to the GM proving ground and we drove the cars together so that way they can have an understanding of what we were looking for mm -hmm. and kind of how our cars feel so that way we could we could speak that common language and then they could really understand what we were looking for so that GM could really integrate and and add features or propose Spec, uh, specs that would meet that. Right. Yeah. So for example, this has an air suspension system, yeah. which Lyric in our market does not have. Yeah. Yeah. And so you had mentioned Lyric in China or and they, it was just already an air suspension system built for this platform. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of shows you the kind of the bandwidth General Motors has on this platform. So we were really lucky. Um, so based on what we had for the MDX, we, from A spec to type S, there was a differentiation with air suspension or adaptive damper. So we said, hey, this is kind of our accurate strategy. What do you have to on offer? You know, what can we share and co-develop? And they offered it up. So it was really a good relationship. Okay. So specs on the car for the viewers who don't know, it's 102 kilowatt hour usable. Correct. It's prismatic cells. Uh, it is the pouch cell, the Altium. Ah, uh, same Altium, Altium pouch cell then. Yeah. Um, but, tr but the voltage of the car is pretty low. It's yeah. like 330 volts nominal yeah. or something yeah. like that. Was that did Acura get involved at all with any of the EV powertrain decisions, the permanent magnet motors? Did, did you get to spec anything? Did you ha say like, hey, GM, we need faster charging or anything like you this? Know, what we really did was kind of 
what what our performance kind of targets were, and then they offered up the kind of options that they had in that bandwidth of the platform. So That's you right. said, here are the attributes you want. How yeah. close can you get yeah. with the stuff? Yeah, and really, have? kind of our alliance or kind of our code development approach was that they had their excellence and they had their know-how in the platform. So we really let them lead it. And integrate. the breaking package was that you guys or was well, that we asked have? for the we asked for the um, Brembos. Yeah, yeah, it's and kind they, of serious breaking. Yeah, package. and they and. They had it available, and that shows you the bandwidth yeah. they have on that platform. Dang. So we That's were able cool. to pick and choose. It was really a fun time. Yeah, really neat. Okay, well, let's run down the yeah. side of the car. Looks cool. So the design team, they had some freedom to make this thing look totally yeah. different. Yeah, than I mean, you, basically, vehicles. you have that kind of skateboard or platform package, and it has such a nice front engine, rear end, rear drive kind of proportion that the designers in California just flipped out and they were so happy to design it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's got to be, it's the best looking, it's the spiciest uh, Ultium vehicle, maybe not Hummer EV, that's crazy, but also not that fast or anything because it weighs so much. But in terms of an overall package, and in, in my impression after driving it today, this is so much more car than the current Lyric from a performance standpoint, but that's what you were going for. It's priced higher. It's got, you know, serious power. It's got higher quality suspension. Yeah. We really wanted to show kind of how th the ZDX kind of links and promotes the MDX. So we wanted to show the same kind of level of steps from mm -hmm. the base model to the um, Type S um, and really high showcase what's available and what can be done. Yeah. Can you talk to me about software? Because uh, I feel like GM, and you know this more intimately than I do, but I think we're kind of done with the days of annoying software bugs and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, like I, think, I think they got a bad rep. Yeah, uh, totally. But, um, but our cars have been stable the entire time. And, Amazing. Um, you know, they've been great partners with us, always making and being clear with us what's open and what's closed. And, I mean, what you drove today is basically, basically what we're shipping. And the cars are going to dealers right now. Right, yeah, yeah. So, they're series production yeah. representative vehicles. Yeah. So we've had no issues like that. So I feel bad reading all those articles, but you know, it's, I don't think they deserve it. Yeah, I mean, in the time that I've spent with Prologue and the time that I've spent with this vehicle, we yeah. have not experienced a single even glitch. And yeah. now that granted, that's maybe only about 400 miles combined across <laughs> yeah. both those vehicles. It's yeah. not a lifetime. But uh, in early days of Ultium stuff, I did have bugs mm -hmm. and now I'm not really seeing them at all. The one thing I really think the car needs more of is faster charging. We just did some charging tests on okay. it and it's got, yeah, it's got the peak at 190 kilowatts. So yeah. it does what it says, yeah. but it just doesn't sustain it that long. Are things like that able to be updated? Will they be supported? Is that something you guys can ask for? Yeah. I mean, you know, as, as this is, this has a full life cycle ahead of it, I'm sure whatever enhancements General Motors offers for the Altium platform is something that we can apply to ours. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So as they improve software and do yeah. things, you can tap in, but you do support over the air updates. Correct. And yeah. that's to most modules on the car, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one of the cool things about the Altium platform that everything's OTA able. Ah, yeah. so every module. So you can go full send on this thing then. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, obviously, you know, our audience, we're the EV nerds, we're the, you know, super into the details yeah, on a bunch of stuff. I, I watch your channel. <laughs> Thank you. What <laughs> should they know about this car? What, I mean, I guess at what point does it become beneficial to develop your own platform, your own chassis, yeah. your own car, yeah. rather than taking someone else's idea? Right. I mean, I think that kind of speaks for itself, you know, separately that, uh, we can talk about later, but for now, you know, with the prologue and the ZDX, it was really about speed to market mm -hmm. and really sharing the risks of the development. So it really was a beneficial relationship to go in with General Motors. We've been a great partner with them on lots of cars yeah. and lots of other products and yeah. businesses. So it was kind of a natural uh, relationship to get into. And we were able to launch the cars this year. Uh, yeah. We think, you know, really kind of the tipping point really mm -hmm. into mass market introduction. So we wanted to be here at that time and um, they have a great platform platform for us to leverage. Can you shed some light into the durability cycles, the test cycles, the stuff that you guys do after you're, you finish your design targets, you get prototypes in? Yeah. How do you test them? This has always been fascinating to me. We see prototypes drive around from time to time. Yeah. What processes do the cars go through before you say, yes, this is a saleable product? Yeah, I mean, um, since General Motors did the validation for the car, I, I can't say for what they would do, but in a typical auto development, car development, you build prototypes and then you test them to the requirements, the specifications, and you basically want to break them to learn where they break and when they break and then fix it. Um, so 
obviously you do that in the beginning with uh, virtual. Right, a lot of simulation. simulation. Yeah. So we do a lot of iterative rounds of CAE analysis, fail, repl uh, you know, repair, then test again and again and again. And then when you have that base level of confidence that it meets all the requirements, then you build a car. So you, we built the first prototypes two years ago. Okay. Yep. And tested. And then once we had that kind of confidence, then we kicked off the mass production tools and dyes and equipment. Yep. And then we've been building for many, many months, right? Right. Yeah. All of this, yeah. the validation yeah. cars, the press cars, the Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cars. So this car is like three months old. Right. Yeah. 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 And, but we've been in production for a little bit and the cars are shipping now. So really it's kind of fun. I remember the first time we built the car, you know, but as soon as the day you built it, you had to camouflage it. So you can't ever see it again. Like, you know, for like a whole year, right. you don't see yeah. it again. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of fun, um, seeing it in the flesh and in the right colors. But it's interesting you mentioned, so obviously, uh, you know, GM did the final validation on the car, yeah. but did Acura have specific things that, you know, maybe for your durability loops or your own warranty situations that you needed GM to test? Did you, you know, say, here's what you need to do? Kind of, that's where a lot of the trust comes in between the OEM. So okay. we kind of discussed that kind of um, requirements and we really decided that because the platform the powertrain and the electrical architecture is OTM. We didn't want to add too many specifications on top that would drive changes because mm -hmm. then when you drive changes to those kind of core components, then then it, the complexity increases. Right. And people freak out and they're yeah. like, this is not the yeah, way exactly. we do so, things. So. <laughs> so obviously for the Honda developed parts, you know, on the top hat as, the, as we call it in the industry, those kind of parts, Honda did our own CAE to make sure they met the requirements. Okay. And then that integration was yeah. kind of General Motors, yeah. So if you had to leave our viewers with some thoughts about maybe the direction of Honda Acura into the future, obviously it seems like maybe this is a one-time partnership. It's a still a full life cycle vehicle. It's a full life cycle. So we have, yeah. you know, we have exciting plans for every year to update the car. So, okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. But in the future, will you go to other automakers and try and take their platforms or? You know, is, I don't, is, I yeah. don't, I, that's way, way, way above my pay grade. So I, I wouldn't know. You yeah. know. Our team's been so focused on the last four years working with GM on these two cars. Yeah. And we're immensely proud on both sides. Let me tell you, yeah. GM is probably watching this right now. You know, <laughs> our team, our partners. Yeah, shout out to those yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, basically it doesn't matter what the company name on your badges, really, when yeah. you put the teams together and their job is to make a great car, they don't yeah. care, right? You yeah. gotta work together and make the best car. Yeah. So I have nothing but trust and respect and love for those guys. Amazing, I love to hear it. I, uh, you know, it's certainly a story we'll be following closely. My own personal preference, or I guess excitement comes to, I can't wait until you guys show us what the Honda team can do. Uh, <laughs> of course, we know this car, we've driven other Ultium products, it is similar. Yeah. Um, I would love to see, like, bring a Honda E, you know, and spice it up a little bit and do something really fun. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, we actually have a couple Honda E's. You can talk to him later. Yeah, that's right. They're uh, in California at yeah. your office. Yeah. yeah. But thanks for joining for the show. Yeah. It's been cool to get a little bit of glimpse into how this car came to be. Um, we certainly have a lot more testing to do, a lot more ZDX stories as we try and demystify it into the future. Look at range, look at charging yeah. performance and handling and other things. But the initial take today was the design team nailed it. I think the car looks great. You certainly have an aggressive tire on here, but I think the take rate of this tire is going to be pretty low. Most people will go all season. So I'd like to drive all season. I'd like to drive a spec. Mm -hmm. There's more to come. Thanks for watching this podcast. Thanks, John, for joining. Thank you. And we'll see you all on another one again soon. Bye-bye. Okay,